Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am coming to you with a very personal and raw video. So as most of you probably know, I usually don't come on camera looking like this. I look like absolute death, but I do have a good reason for it. And it's because I just had a extended abdominoplasty with breast augmentation surgery. That's just a long word for a tummy tuck um, with a boob job. I guess. Uh, so I, what I wanted to do was to come to you and kind of share my journey with you because I was looking at some videos last night of other women who have gone through this procedure. It is so very common. And I just felt like I wanted to come to you and kind of share with you my story. As most of you know, I have lost a good bit of weight. I've lost a total of about 110 pounds over a couple of years. I did this all on my own with no weight loss surgery, um, just by dieting. And then in December, I started working out with a trainer and lost a little bit more of what I wanted to lose. And in February of this year, I went to see a plastic surgeon for my consultation. Now, this is not something I took lightly. Um, I have been thinking about doing this for so long. It was something that I knew that I always wanted to do, but I was very scared. Being a nurse in my previous life, <laughs> um, no, it's the same life actually, but um, I was a nurse years ago, and I know all too much how things can go wrong with surgery, so I was a big chicken. And I'm like, you know what? This is something that I want really, really, really badly, but I was also scared to death. I can probably, um, gosh, I can't even think how long I have wanted to do this. A long, long, long time. But I did it. I did it, yay, and I'm so excited. I have no idea how this is all going to turn out. I am only six days post-op today. So this, you know, my results are unchartered. I have no idea how it's going to look, but I do know one thing, it has to look a whole lot better than it looked before because it looked horrible. My stomach was terrible, terrible. Anytime you lose that much weight, plus I had three kids, you know, two C-sections, I had the stomach that just flapped over. It was not good, trust me, not good. I had a ton of stretch marks and it just looked horrible, so, I know that whatever my results are, it's gotta be better than that, right? Now, I also did get a breast augmentation done at the same time, and I wanna explain that. So at first, when I went to see my surgeon, I talked about I didn't really wanna be bigger. I'm already big busted as it is, and I really didn't want extra volume, but we started talking a little bit and she's actually a very, very conservative plastic surgeon. And she understood me all too well when I said, you know what, I do not want like big boobs and you know, but I also wanted nice, if I was gonna do this, I wanted nice looking boobs at the same time. So what we did was we decided to go with a low profile plus, meaning that a low profile impact, in, implant a low profile implant is just basically a flat silicone disc a low profile plus means that it has a little bit of a hump like that because i didn't want anything that would make me protrude out any further i didn't want porn star boobs i just wanted nice full pretty youthful breast and that's what she decided that would be the best for me so we picked a size that was appropriate, um, not something that is very big at all. And what I had to get done was um, actually a breast reduction on one side because my right boob was bigger than my left, which I know is common in a lot of women. A lot of women have this issue. And I did, ever since I was a teenager, I was uneven. It was something that drove me crazy. I hated it always, I hated it back then. And, um, you know, but there was a way to fix this. So we removed, or she removed, 253 cc's out of my right breast, lifted them up, meaning took out, you know, extra skin, and then placed a 320 cc implant, silicone, the gummy bear type, um, in underneath the muscle, 
in both sides. So basically, she said that my breasts really wouldn't be any bigger than what they were before surgery. I was probably going to stay in my same bra size, which I was thrilled about, but they would be, um, of course, fuller and prettier and have that youthful appearance because um, that's kind of, you know, what I wanted. It was, if I figured that if I was going through the time, the pain, the risk of having this done, then I wanted as best results as I could possibly have. So that's the reason why I went with the breast augmentation um, over just a lift, which I knew that I definitely needed. Um, I was just worried that over time, gravity would set in again because I am big breasted and they would sag and droop again and I wouldn't be happy in the long run. So I am very, very thankful that I decided to do that because there was at one point I was really thinking of just getting the lift instead of getting the implants put in and I am so so glad that I kind of thought about it a little more and she explained to me that you know we wouldn't be putting a whole lot of more volume in because of what she was taking out so glad with that decision um, on my breast what I did have is my nipples were removed, so I do have a scar or an incision. I mean, it's not a, it's a fresh incision because I'm only six days post-op, but it is an incision all the way around both areolas and then underneath my breast. Um, so it's kind of like that anchor, you know, that they talk about, the anchor incision, and nothing on the top. So there's no like incisions on the top of my breast. She did put in a drain in the right breast and that was removed today um i so as far as the pain goes with that it is sort of painful the breast implants were put in underneath the muscle which is the best way to do it from what i am told um and then um it's just you know very tight and and sort of painful but not unbearable really this whole procedure has not been unbearable has it been painful? Yes, it has been painful, especially the stomach part. But I mean, it's not something that you can't bear. You know, it's not unbearable. It's definitely something that, um, you know, you have to have help. And thank goodness I do have help. And you couldn't do it without help. You definitely need someone to stay with you, someone who will be here with you to help you bathe or shower. Um, to change your dressings, which you have to do twice a day, to empty out your drains, which you have to do every two hours, and to get anything you may need because getting up and down is painful. It is really painful. Um, now, as far as my stomach goes, you guys, my stomach was horrible. I mean, really, really bad. I got pregnant at a very young age, and I don't know if that's why I had such horrible stretch marks, but I did have really, really bad stretch marks. Um, and I still do have stretch marks. Unfortunately, the surgery is not going to remove stretch marks if you have stretch marks above your belly button, which I did. So I'm going to have to you know, live with that. I'm going to have to just be okay with that. And I think that I will be. I'm hoping that I will be. I do tan. I like to tan a lot. So I'm hoping that they won't be as noticeable. And I know there's things that they're doing now with laser. So maybe that's an option later on. I don't really know. But um, it's, I know for one thing, my stomach will definitely be better looking than what it was before because it was horrible, horrible. Um, so I have an incision. It's a horizontal incision from hip to hip. I got what's um, called an extended abdominoplasty. And that is where it basically you're cut from hip to hip, very, very low into your pubic area. Um, that way when your skin stretches out, that scar does rise up a little bit. So if she doesn't, or if your surgeon does not cut down low enough, you will be left with a scar that is higher than what you probably want. So it's really important that they go as low as possible with that incision, um, which it is, it's very low. I did get liposuction done in that area, also on my flanks, so in my waist area. 
I was not flipped over um, um, and I did not get lipo in my back and that's because I think she explained to me that you she really didn't want to have that's a lot done you know but between the breast and the lipo that I had done and the tummy tuck that I had done that was enough um, and so you know I took her word for it for sure but I know that I did get a good bit of liposuction done on my sides and in the pubic area and in, of course, the stomach area and on the sides of my, um, my boobs on this side. Now, um, I did get a new belly button, so I will have a new belly button. And um, let's see what else I wanna tell you. I do have a drain that is still in. I went for my first post-op visit today. It's been six days and the tummy drain was still draining too much for her to pull that drain today. So I will keep that in for another week. I go back to see her um, next week and she will more than likely definitely pull that drain at that time. She did pull the drain that I had on the breast, so I did have two drains. Um, she pulled that one, so now I only have one drain left, yay! Um, as far as the pain and what you can expect if you are watching this video thinking that you know you want to have this done. Um, first of all, I stayed overnight and I would highly recommend that. My surgery was six and a half hours long. That's a long time to be under anesthesia and go home the same day, in my opinion. Now I know people do it all the time, but I just felt that um, even with you know, having someone here with me 24 seven, I wanted, you know, skilled nurses looking at me, taking my blood pressure, taking my vitals, checking my nipples to make sure that they're not turning colors and all that stuff. I wanted that. Um, and I'm so very glad that I stayed the night in the hospital that night, because believe me, you do not want to move. You are in, you're in some good amount of pain at that time. Um, but then I went home the next day and recovering hasn't been that bad. Um, it's bearable. Does it hurt? Yes, it does. You see this recliner? I have been sleeping in the recliner every night. Um, it's been the most comfortable for me, even though I have the type of bed that goes up and down at the, you know, the head of the bed and the foot of the bed goes up and down. I still have found that it's way easier for me to get in and out of the recliner than it is to get in and out of my bed because my bed is a little bit higher up. So it's been pretty um, comfortable in the recliner. I prop a pillow underneath my legs at night and I can kind of like shift to one hip and shift to the other hip and um, it's pretty comfortable. And then I wear a DVT machine um, which is the sleeves that go on your legs and it pumps up your legs to help prevent blood clots. So anytime you are not active and you are um, kind of laid up and you know, post-surgery, that is important that you do have that DVT machine to help prevent blood clots. I am wearing a compression garment. So I don't know if you can really tell, um, but this is the garment here. It zips up and it kind of like, um, kind of like has these little um, clasp that clasp every now and then, and then it zips up, which makes it easy to get on and well, kind of easy to get on and off. You don't have to take it off to use the bathroom, so that's really really nice. It is open at the bottom, so you can go to the bathroom number one and number two um, without having to take this garment off because you do want to keep this on at all times you only want to take it off when you are allowed to shower which for me this was at 72 hours i was allowed to take a shower um so i was able you know to do that to take it off but then i put it back on or we put it back on right after the shower um, my drain. So this is the drain that I have in right now. So if you're queasy, don't look at this. Um, but this started out like really, really red mixed with a lot of blood. But now you can see that it is um, kind of like a straw colored and that's a good thing. So this is six days post-op and the color is no longer bloody. It's just that serosanguinous 
fluid, um, meaning like that straw colored fluid, um, which drains off, you know, of your, of your wounds, I guess, in, in your abdominal cavity. Now I am very swollen, very, very swollen. I feel very puffy and that was one of my concerns when i went today is i told her you know that i'm feeling really really i i knew that to expect swelling but i just feel like like bloated and she said it all looked good it was to be expected i would be you know swollen and that just it's going to take time it's going to take some time and i am the most impatient person in the world so me and time do not get along so i am hope hoping that I can handle the swelling and, you know, not get too emotional because I am, I have gotten pretty emotional through this thing. And that's another thing that I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about. They gave me a pamphlet, um, with my pre-op stuff that kind of explained all of the like kind of emotional things that you would go through or that you could go through. And I do have to say that I have been emotional. I don't know if it's the pain medicine, the changes to my body or just what, but I've, you know, especially when I take a shower, you know, things I can tell that things are going to look really, really good. But at this moment, they look horrible. Like I have these huge incisions all over the place. I'm bloated. I, you know, I have um, one breast looks bigger than the other breast because, you know, this breast had a drain in it and this one didn't. And so things are not perfect. So you have to kind of trust your surgeon and know that things are going to be okay. And I know that they are. I know that for one, it's got to be better than what it looked like before. I'm going to pop in a picture of where I am um, now and a picture of, or, or vice versa, a picture of my before stomach. It's horrible, you guys. It's like really bad. Really, really, really bad. Um, and I'm really embarrassed about that picture, but I also know that if I'm going to do this little series and kind of share this with you, then I want to be kind of transparent with you and show you my progress as we go along. So the first picture that you'll see is the before picture and it's not pretty. It is not pretty. I probably had the worst stomach I think ever. That's what I think anyway. Um, and then the next picture is three days post-op. So before picture and a picture that is three days post-op. So that has been my experience so far. Um, my one advice to you is stay on top of your medications. Um, take the pain medicine. Do not be a martyr. You know, take the pain medicine. Rest frequently. Get up and walk as much as possible. That is way more than one thing of advice. Th these are my things of advice. I should say that, not just one thing of advice. But um, rest frequently. Try and walk as much as you can. Um, take your pain medication. Get help. Make sure that someone is with you all the time to help you. Um, don't do anything crazy like trying to lift things off of the floor and, um, you know, lift, you know, bend down, you know, be mindful that you just basically had this huge abdominal surgery and you don't want to mess anything up. Um, and that is it. So that is it for this video for this six day post-op tummy tuck breast augmentation part of my journey. Hopefully I will come to you with another video um, at some point. I don't really know when. If you are not following me on Instagram, um, please do at Simply Rocks 2017. And you know, I don't share, I'm not gonna share everything, you know, on my Instagram page, but you can kind of see what I'm doing, what I'm up to. Um, until the next video anyway uh, thank you guys so much for joining me and that if you are having any um if you are having thoughts of um, doing this surgery just do it do it for yourself because no one can 
explain what being so self-conscious about your body um, is like unless you are going through it yourself. So don't feel like you know, you're doing this for anyone else. If you feel like you want to do this for you, then do it for you because we have to live with our bodies and it's our self-confidence and, um, in how we look that matters the most. And if it's, you know, through help of having this done, then by all means, you know, seek out a great plastic surgeon, go for a consultation and um you know and explore this for yourself as well all right guys thank you guys so much for watching i love you i miss you and i will catch you on the next video bye-bye